hotel once, um, a very nice hotel, and as I pulled in, the guy opened the door and he said, welcome to the hotel, Mr. Morocco. And I said, how the hell do you know my name? So then I went inside, it was champagne. I checked in, I got upstairs, as soon as I got upstairs, my phone rang. He said, hi, Mr. Morocco, just want to make sure uh, you checked in okay, everything's fine. Do you need anything? And I said, no, I'm fine, right? So he just kept checking in, and then there was a the whole thing afterwards, uh, the follow-up process, I got a gift, and then I, then I got a phone call, how was your stay after I got home? It was like a whole process where like, all I wanted to do was talk about this hotel. Um, and I did, and then obviously then they gave me the offer, so like, come back and stay for 25% off the cases. So they had systems in place, right? So uh, the point of the story is everybody here has systems in their business, which is why we call them up. Systems that just constantly uh, generate and get people coming back, okay? Um, before we get started, I just want to remind you, we're going to go right up until 5 o'clock, and then we're going to stream Robert's all through the game right here, so you have to move. Um, cool? Alright. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce everybody. Um, I'll start all the way down at the end. Uh, Rita Brown, out of our Madison Avenue office on the Upper East Side. And before we get started, we have a little bit of a mix of everything. Right? So we have some big teams with tremendous amounts of transactions, all the way down to Riot who operates on our own. All the way down to Riot who operates on our own. So you're going to get a little bit of taste of everything. <laughs> so Ria, Madison Avenue uh, office, most of your business is in Brooklyn. Yes, yeah, so I sit, in, uh, I sit on a man's suit in Madison Avenue and I'm an here. And then also Brooklyn makes up. And then 70% of my transactions are Brooklyn, which is right. Awesome. Um, Colin Bond and Boris Fabricant are partners, business partners. Um, you want to give us a little bit about your team? Um, so we're 15 people. We have uh, three admin publications. We have a dedicated friends uh, division, and uh, we're very systems driven. We cover all Manhattan and uh, and uh, we're we're pretty transaction heavy. We did about 140 uh, sale buy side buy sale buy sell side last year. And I'm already buy sell and sales, and sales transactions. Yeah. And it's only rental. One eight. One eight. That's so over 300. Yeah. And how long have you guys been doing the numbers? So we started together a second ago. We were part time for that while we were practicing a lot. And of your 16, how many are agents, how many are admin? Uh, so we have three, we're 15, three admin, three sales, and then one like three admin, director of operations, is going to hurt, and then uh, 12 agents are doing it with us. Right. Two left, we have Eugene in the back. Everybody probably knows Eugene. Yes. Uh, Eugene and I had the pleasure of growing up together in real estate. I'm going to call it back. Just don't have to laugh, but we're in real estate. <laughs> um, tell us about your team. You did over 800 transactions last year. Woo! So wow. Uh, I actually started my career with you. It was my first time. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually brought some of the soil company. The company of the evolution team. Like, uh, six people in 20 years to so work with on the soil company. And we handle everything, right? So the development, all your needs on the wrong roof is like the Right. To your left, we have Bianca Colasuena. Colasuena. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all queens, yes. right? And you corrected me, and I said you did over 100 transactions last year. She said I've done 127 this well, year. Well, we closed on 127 last year. We don't handle rentals, and we did 120 so far this year. Excellent. We have a pretty small team. We have three different agents, including myself, two part time agents, an operations person, a VA, and this is a marketing company. Awesome. Who we'll waits for that? Pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> when you have a system, they'll never answer that. Of course. Tell us about yourself. I'm just here for the cheese and wine. I mean, I'm pretty much excited to be. We met in law school, we were both attorneys for seven years. We thought it was a silly investment to go to law school. We saw the awesomeness as we all get it. Right, so let's kick it off a little bit. Um, tell us about your structure of your team. Like, how does that work? You just walk. 
So we have, um, I started a business lab where we try to emulate uh, what I call little companies. So I sit as a uh, founder slash CEO. We have a uh, department, so we have sales department, the marketing department, the operations department, the marketing department. Somebody has every single department. I have sales, uh, right now on our team has up uh, right sales, and we have my three ways of ops, marketing, and finance. The sales department and the rental department each have support, a marketing and sales marketing and rental coordinator. And then my executive system also focuses on asset So everything is really structured. I don't have annual goals or KPIs or targets, whatever you want to call it. There's an operational system. This is taking a long time to create. If anyone's interested in calling this site, it's not going to happen in a month or even a year. It's taking a real long time to create. But now everything that happens in our world, everything is systematic. It's very well scrambled. Like whatever might happen, a referral, a rental, a sale, whatever comes into our world, we can just know it's a playbook. You know who's going to grab it, you know who's going to handle it, you know who does what. And so it just makes everything, it takes a lot to get here, but then it makes it a little easier. Okay. Who can add on to that? Bianca, can you add on to that? How's your team structure? Well, I would, I would say that it does take a long time to develop, and I think that's probably the important that we have to give ourselves some grace when we're building and such, because there's some trial and error that goes into it, even these markets different. Um, and I think that as you build things, sometimes you do make mistakes, but it does mean you should have to battle and continue to try to build it. Our team is structured, it's obviously a much smaller team, so we know exactly who does what and we have very clear different roles in the team, which I think is probably the most important part of building these systems. Whatever your structure is and everyone's might be different, having clearly defined roles is the first critical step in my opinion. I'll just add one thing, it's it's building blocks. You don't build a house on one week, you start with a couple things, the foundation, the framing. Um, you talked about how much you love this hotel, I think that should be the goal, because you're now an ambassador to this hotel. Um, they, all of your clients that really you interact with should become an ambassador of you, and they become an ambassador of you with some comparison with the experience. My suggestion, similar to what Bianca just said, is start with one thing at a time. You know, start with, if you're new in the industry, you're doing rentals, it's a great system for rentals, because you get to the point like we us here, you can't keep up with rentals. If you have a system, you're still getting business from that. Um, you know, start with uh, just the people you sold to. Create just an anniversary email. Or even better, we just learned from the agent in DC. He does handwritten cards. Every anniversary, every anniversary. It's so much better than the email that we thought was awesome. Do the handwritten card. And then um, you know, create a separate system for the referral business, just one by one. So uh, it's funny you said that the back new systems have always taken place, but I remember back, I don't know if you remember this, I thought I was a genius, and I created a 12 folder system. Right? This was before CRMs were really old computers. We had horses. Um, <laughs> you, you had 12 folders in your desk, and whenever you closed the deal, you would take the birthday card, of the birthday of that person, you put it in the November folder, and then the anniversary card would be written at that day, you put it in the December folder, and you would do it. So once November rolled around, you just took the folder out and put it in the mail. Uh, and it actually, I think, worked great. It's still on. Yeah, true, true story. It's January, but it's February 2006. And I sit down with James, my manager, and he's like, 12 folders, this is what you do. My mind already got this would happen. <laughs> 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 So it's February 2006, and I thought, yeah, and he's like, oh, hold this, here you are, every time I saw him, you do a birthday card, every time you meet someone, make sure it's all months for nine, nine months for a day, you stay in touch, and all I did was a little better than start with a folder system or a calendar. Today we have CRMs and all this other stuff, but then, I want to um, just like what Bianca said, and what I love, and of course, said, it's really important to understand you guys are a foundation. So, this whole thing started with, I'm just going to reach out to people on their birthdays, and I'm just going to put a calendar on it, and now it's just started with simple. Now we have a whole operations and planning care program, it's a CRM, and there's gifts and the whole stuff. I mean, what we want to do is we want to occupy real estate in people's minds. That's also the goal. Right? Like we're, we're buying a house right now, my wife and I. And like, this is why I'm professional. I mean, that I do a lot of it, and still the emotions are running high. I'm trying to manage the expectations of my family. And I'm waiting, oh my God, it's going to praise. And I feel my emotions are running high. And the agent on the listening side, she's been so great in like, checking in. So I'm not going to remember the real estate part, because I have that right now, but it's in a neighborhood that you don't do a lot of business in. 
And if I had any work in that neighborhood, there'd be no second guessing. I wouldn't take on myself, I would just refer to her because of how well I got treated. Not a real thing center per se, but in the same spirit they had in myself. Like that part is the human part. I think part of systems, part of what systems do is they make everything really autonomous, so it's really easy to lose the genetic in systems. So it's important to have both. It's important to have the systems so you're functional and things are smoothly. Don't forget the human part. Don't forget to start checking and hand and deliver, right? That's the difference of automation yeah. and systems. Right. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask, and I think a lot of people have, they know they should grow it. They're, they're fearful to grow that, oh my gosh, I can't afford this system, or I don't want to expand. It's going to be too much work. How do I do this? When, and maybe you guys have all touched on this, at what point in your career did you realize that if I don't, have a system, if I don't expand, that I'm just going to stay the same. Like, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. You don't well, no, I mean, I happen to be the only person on this panel that doesn't have an assistant and doesn't have a team. So I have major imposter syndrome <laughs> being here right now. I had therapy this morning, and my therapist told me to focus on like, nature. I got nervous. I was like, But I really feel like systems are designed to improve the flow of your work. So because I'm only one person, anything that kind of you know stands in my way can be the tiniest little thing, like having to send an extra second looking for a certain document on my files. Anything like that that impedes my workflow is a problem. So I really like to think of it in terms of like a feng shui perspective. Um, so I said that in a way that I have a fairly robust business, which is why I'm assuming I'm not here, but um, I'm able to do it on my own. So, but I know this because I have 20 years of business experience as an entrepreneur and running other people's businesses as a consultant. So these systems are set up in place in history for me to be able to work with my employees, and now I'm my only employee. Right. So um, it's as easy as having files set up on your desktop. Like I have a, fol a folder called New Client Packet that basically has a co op buyer, a condo buyer, a co op seller, a condo seller, renter, a landlord. And within these file folders, I'm going to basically just go to this master file with every new client, and everything's at my fingertips. So I have DocuSign set up, all of my templates are in there, all of my fair housing, all of my New York State disclosure forms. Everything is set up as a template, so I can just send it with, you know, sort of two clicks and it's done. Um, so the systems really have saved me from having to hire somebody. I mean, I think it's really also a philosophical choice whether you have an assistant or not. I've had many employees in the past when I decided to go to real estate. I, I really didn't want to have employees only because I know how important it is to take care of these people. And I actually stopped having employees when my kids were little. It's like, I have kids already. I don't need more. <laughs> so I thought that responsibility was too great for me to bear. I didn't have it. I mean, my kids now are 15 and 17, so maybe when they're out of the house, they'll feel differently. Um, but I'm certainly like at that point now where I feel like I can manage a very healthy volume of business with the systems that I set up. Great. Tom, you want Yeah, so we, we started our systems before we started the team. Um, when we were thinking about putting a lot to start real estate, we started building a playbook right off the bat. We knew we, we, knew we wanted to scale right in the beginning. Yes, we have this playbook. Here you are, you're in the block. You don't know anything about this. So how do you build a system? Do you, you guys read books? It was, it was a very rough outline. And then as we, we I mean, we still had to attend, um, I think, there's so many things that happen when you try to cover as many as possible. But this industry is it's constantly changing and you deal you have a deal that is different every single time. So we try to hit as many of the broad points as we can in the playbook so that we can have a, so that basically a team member can take this, run it, and and have a hopefully follow this transaction. Um, and it's just been constantly evolving since the beginning. I just want to add one thing. Yeah. We've kind of cheated a little, right? Like, my, we both have families in real estate, so we didn't just say, oh, we'll figure this out. Um, my dad had a brokerage firm up in Brooklyn. We lived in it. So we also went through the process of buying an apartment, and we just realized, okay, we can do this better. It's fresh in our heads. We were able to create it. Um, I, I just wanted to jump in and say one thing that 
Rhea said. You mentioned something about an extra click, and it actually resonated with me because I was going to say something that I think parallels. Um, you can't afford not to hire early. And what I mean by that is if you're doing this job, you have to invest in yourself. You have to believe more in yourself than all of your clients because they can see that, they can feel that. So when Colin and I were told, hey, there's this new admin that just wants to leave the team, you should hire her. We were like, oh my God, I don't know, we haven't really made any money yet. He convinced us, and I'm glad he did. Because it's the same thing with the clicks. You know, I, I am constantly in Sos Colin looking for ways to do you know, one click instead of three, everything. So if I'm coming across something that I'm, okay, I've done this four times, how can I do this with less time? I could have four clients waiting to hear from me. That's so time sensitive. I had to reprogram my brain to, that's a short-term problem, an extra five minutes of me Googling this for a long-term gain is so much more beneficial. And, and that's how we look at the system. And look, Colin and I have three now because we signed into this. I, mean, I think you invested heavily too. We see that it's painful financially, and especially because you're committing to it for so long. But if you do it right, um, we're happy to help you, all of us. You know. So let's it's, dive in right now. We keep saying the word systems, right? Give us an idea of a system. They're all on the edge of their seat. I see this right now. And give us an idea of what happens when a buyer calls you. What is the process of what, what happens? I mean, first of all, when any group or person is interested in transacting with us, it's the most important thing is we need to be such a strong right back, right? I mean, that's not really a system, but it's just a basis of business setting. We try to contact someone within five minutes. That's our goal. Um, so we also have a hierarchy of who we contact first. So let's say we have a current email in the morning, we have 20 emails or whatever it may be. We decide who's going to be a priority person for us. It's a system we created. So, sellers and referral agents are a top priority for us. So, we know that those are the people we want to respond to first. Buyers are after that, agents that are on schedule, and then current businesses after that, and then everything else. Um, and people ask me, why would you put current business below all the other stuff? Well, we have systems to follow up with our current business. So, we know if they're being contacted multiple days during the week, we have different programs for what we do with our current business. So they never wonder what's going on. So if there's a reason they're reaching out, they just recently heard from us so we can get back to them in a moment. But in terms of a buyer, I mean we originally excuse me, immediately set up a, a call with them to determine what they're looking for and what we can help them. And then again from someone on the team that's a great fit. Um, we also decide and we spoke a little bit about the stand whether it's someone we want to take in. So in terms of systematizing things and moving quickly to decide how to you know, save ourselves time. If it's a client that comes to us that we can't help, we, we let them know immediately. And this is not in our own house. If it's a rental, we don't handle them. We just say they're reaching out to us and move on. Um, I don't think that agents do that enough. I think we try to do too many things to see people. We need to stay out of your house because no system is going gonna, is gonna to save you time if you're running all over the place. So I think it's important to stay identify who your short businesses and make sure that you are welcome that for business. So, I think this is not something we talk about how we go from it, but that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. So, so we know we know in advance. It seems so Mass Medical used to be a company called Mass Medical. They have a lot of rules like services. So we kind of took that example. We don't have services, but we just have a piece of work comes in. It's a listing or enter or rental listing, but whatever it is, we kind of know who's going to go to. So uh, I think that, I think the thing that we get uh, um, bogged down most with is our inboxes. All right, so there's this concept of a tunnel. So I heard this from somebody maybe uh, 10 years ago that uh, that person wants to be 80% of all of us. There's a family that's like sort of goal set, and you design an attention person. And then we make up emails, text, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, etc. and all your goals go out the window. So I want to design a system where there was somebody else going back to the system thing, where there's somebody else handling all the stuff that I don't need to look at. So my assistant's in my inbox. So I don't look at my email ever. I go with the, the my assistant's like, he's in my inbox, he's he's in China, we've been together for a year. He's trying to process every single email that comes in, and I only see things flash. So out of the 500 emails I get a day, and we handle close off the transactions all the time, so we write the sales and go, and he's flying all the emails. So I'm only really doing maybe 50 to 60 emails a day out of 500. 
And our speaker is also acting because whatever comes in, Zach knows based on our playbook who then to go to. So someone emails and say, Hey, we're looking at my home, great, thank you very much. He'll reply, I'm not the agent of the book right now. So it's just everything, again, it took a while to get there, but everything's kind of simple. So the clients get speed. And right, you can't you can't do all things to everyone, and you have a choice to turn on the business, you can leverage it and say, well, you know, if if, if you know, business starts to get a lot of renters, then you should hire one person to take all the renters if she wants to. Every time you have that choice, you can either say no to or you can leverage it. Either choice is wrong. Yeah, there's somebody out there that wants friends. You know what? Referring to us, we're like three people that I was able But anyway, I, I wasn't calling that thing out specifically. But every single time something happens in your business, there's an opportunity to leverage it. When you think of a system, it can sound really complicated. A system is just an intentional pattern. All of you guys have systems. You wake up, you have a system. How you brush your teeth, what do you do first, how you get dressed, you have a system. It's just when you put a little bit of intention and memorialize it, now it becomes. Now it becomes a oh, productive system versus just something you do. So I think I think I think more set up for this. When you something you do, if there's a way to take back one or two steps, that's all you're doing, you build the system. And that's the old fans. I'd love to ask you this back. I think when you're hearing all of this, sometimes you can feel overwhelmed. I've heard this so many times and been like, oh my god, I cannot do that. But I think the important thing to keep in mind is that I had a great business coach who always say, how do you eat an elephant? And it's one bite at a time, right? You just have to take it down bit by bit into small pieces. And you can't look at the whole thing as a big project, just break it down into steps. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, it's, it's the difference between working in your business and working on your business. None of this can be created if you don't take time away from your email, away from your phone, you know, put a time on your phone for an hour and sit down and spend time thinking about your business and how to improve it. If you're just building things that come to you, you cannot build, you cannot build beyond the transaction you're in. And just to add to that, I think the bite by bite analogy is really good. That try to take as few bites as possible. Like really try to be efficient about the number of bites that you're taking. I think efficiency is really key. Um, you know, for, for me, if, if we're going to talk about systems like taking on a new client, um, my, my partner's on the panel here, they have teams and they'll sort of disseminate the client with the information to the pertinent people. And for me, I really sort of have to think after I have that initial conversation, like, is this client right fit for me? Am I going to be able to handle this situation or this, you know, this scenario in a way that I can be really proud of? And it, sometimes the answer is no. And I think if you really want to, I really like to focus on the quality of my service and really understand what I'm good at. And so being able to do a referral is, you know, we have the most amazing referral network right here in this room. I think really understanding that can also be part of your system. You don't have to do everything yourself. I'm going to share a system with you guys that I love. Um, anytime you have a listing, if you are not turning that one listing into at least one or two other transactions, you're not doing yourself justice. Um, it's something that was ingrained in me when we first started in the industry. It's a lot easier back then because you literally could just say open house and people would come walk in and you meet people. Now we're going to buy appointment only, so I feel like it's a little bit harder. But um, you're going to meet directs at your listings. If you aren't, if you don't have a system for it, you're never going to convert them because it's so rare that they're like, "Oh my God, we have a mutual friend in common." And that, that doesn't, I mean, of course, that happens once in a while. But you know, something that I personally do, as soon as I get a direct, they go into an entire system. And what I do is, and, I, and you guys have all heard this before: create a collection, tell them about the collection, tell them what it is, send them a buyer's guide, then send them, "Hey, here's a closing cost calculator. Create an Excel. Very simple." I'm constantly touching them to add value. And then the collection's gonna update them on things that are in their search criteria. Um, I'm gonna see things once in a while that I think, oh hey, I remember you said you really want a fixer upper. This one is a fixer upper. And by the way, to plug some compass products, um, I love Bulk Messenger. It just saves so much of my time. Because what I do is um, I had this one listing in Tribeca, it was 2.7 million. Created a search criteria, 2.5 to 2.9. And I created that search, and then I would just email all of them, hi, first name, right? And then I'd add in something personal. And then something that I just came across on my own is you could go back and just select all of those people and hit this follow up. And now you're creating basically a list, now that's a system. That list of people for two years, I just kept sending stuff to. And 
look, I wasn't perfect. I skipped a couple months. Um, here's a trick. I once sent them a link and it didn't work. And then all of a sudden, so many people replied. Hey, here's that link. Great trick. Uh, I've used it since again. Um, so create a system. If you get a listing and you don't have a system, you are leaving money on the table. And look, don't get discouraged if you don't, but it took two years. I'm still working these people three years later. Um, that's the system. Right. Yeah, I, I think just whatever your day to day is, like, that's the system right at town. And then you're going to point Z, then you take steps away and make it more efficient. So your system is like the overall, and then the efficiency is what comes as you continue to own everything. I also wanted to tie on to what Eugene had said about the system being an intention because. I operate on my own, and so my business tends to be very holistic because I don't really have hard boundaries between the work day, family life, and all that. And I found that personally, my own system that works for me is that my home life has to be really well taken care of, which means that my kids are fine, I've got groceries in the fridge, my apartment is in a mess. I mean, there was a point in my life where I was getting so frazzled that I could not get a sense of balance, and I hired a personal coach. And we went through business, and we went through work, and she's like, everything seems great. Like, what's going on on the home front? And it turned out we were able to distill, because I, for some reason, had to let our planning lady go, and my heart had just really messy. And all of that noise in the background of just the visual mess, and I'm a very visual person, kind of like was making me crazy. And I realized that it's not easy for me, and I think for a lot of people, to really be able to sort of separate yourself from that when you're a sole proprietor, you're doing this all on your own. Everybody has a family life, everybody has friends, you might have a dog, you know, we're not alone in this. So I think that for me personally, my system, I know that my system actually involves a lot of sort of personal stuff that strengthens the foundation for which I can operate. So I also think that you know taking care of yourself mentally and making sure that you're sort of self-regulating, that you're not super stressed, it it really allows for your intuition to be stronger as well. And I think that within this business of us dealing with so many different types of personalities, it's so important to be attuned with your clients and to really make that human connection because otherwise, at the end, what you say it's, it's a system. It's not a. Um, it's a not an automation. It's not an automation, right? It's a system, and I think that the most important thing about that, and I think that what Compass really pushes, is that that human connection is really important. The, the technology behind it is basically that's your foundation, and that should all sort of go into the background, and that makes you look great, right, and it makes your job easier. But at the same time, the the psychological and the mental, all of that that's involved in transacting is just as important, and maybe more so. Uh, I have a question. So let's say you're a new agent, or you're an experienced person, but you're new to the state. You don't have the built-in connections. What system, at that point, how do you grow your business out of nothing? And what system would you do for that? Uh, first of all, anyone else feel like you guys got to figure out all this business? I would say uh, it's all about networking. Your, your net worth is a direct proportion to your network. So the thing is, you know, man, what are you supposed to be fun? Somewhere along the way, whenever you start this business, it's fun. It's exciting, it's new. You love preview parties, you want to talk to everybody, and somewhere along the way, it starts to become a job, right? It starts to become uh, boring, frustrating, and whatnot. So, the best part of what we do is every single person you talk to ever is a potential client. So, think about the thing that you love to do the most. Maybe it's chess, you know, I, I love basketball, Moisture, I love personal development, I mean, that can be like every, any, anything that is a community. You just get into the air, and then you just gotta let everybody know what you're doing. The thing that I see uh, most agents or teams fail the most is lack of consistent marketing. So if you're, if you're, you know, the, the whole game is just meet people, like them, show them who you are, and you continually, consistently let them know what you're doing. Like that, that's the piece that people miss the most. Is like, is the consistent marketing social? Social is free, guys. I haven't seen. Like I'm looking around, and I think I see maybe like ten people look at their phone. And do a story or something, right? Like it's free. 
Right now, you're doing something. If you, if you need social media, part of it, are you like, oh, yes, it's the first thing I did. Like, it's free. You know, you're just letting people into your world. It doesn't cost anything. You have to change your mindset. Some people are like, social media. Okay, they don't. It's the world we live in. So, you make that part of your life. And you, even that's easy. Ryan's right here. You got to show social media. It's up to Ryan. But if you're trying to build your business, that's the way to do it. You should get to environments. And if, if, if a client has a great experience with you, and especially their uh, active on social, which most people are, and that didn't exist. When we were open up this, that didn't exist. I, you know, when I was first moving about this, I didn't say, well, you have a good experience. Can you do a story and tag me to your whole community? Like, we didn't have that. So that's the easiest one to do. Find something you love, get into that community, hit social media, let people know what you're doing, and that's all the second. I would also work for free. I mean, it's probably not a popular thing to say, but like when I first moved to New York, I worked for free. I was an intern, and I would work for anybody for free just to learn. There are a gazillion agents who need help and who could use some help showing on the weekends. And if you tell them you don't have to pay me, they'll probably use you more than the people that they have to pay $7,500 to. So I used to have a saying when I was a broker, um, it was, I show real estate for a living. Sometimes I get paid for it. <laughs> and it's still the case. It's still the case. I, I, I had a great mentor very early on, and the person told me, you should see five properties a day. 25 a week, 100 a month, 1,200 a year. Now you do this back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and that gave me incredible confidence to, because I'm not, you know, I, in social situations, I feel more comfortable, I don't need push your business, but then I, I realized I have to be an expert. It's my job and duty to inform people, and they're always going to ask me how the market is, so I'm going to instead say, I saw the most incredible property on the next week, 14 foot ceilings. You should see it. You know, and all of a sudden, because I knew the product, I became the broker. So the city, you can you can really create something out of nothing. The property is there. Go see it. Be an expert. You can always outwork something. And sometimes get free lunch. <laughs> well, now we now we can go see that property. Look at this great property. So talk to us now about I think agents you see that all the time. You have a roller coaster, right? Market, 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 market. We get really busy and we stop marketing. Right? Then all of a sudden we're dead. We market. So what do you guys do after the transaction? What do you do to constantly keep a flow of leads? You guys don't have any leads. No, I'm not. Go ahead. So let's say it's so close to transaction, deal with the referral, we want you to be listening, whatever it is, sit down and just, just brainstorm all the steps that are involved in that, right? That's the first thing I would do. And then take that and put it into order of operations. What happens first and what happens last? That becomes your checklist. And that's really the basis of your system, right? That checklist can become a great hiring ad for someone that you would look at want to hire for that position. It can also become a job description in the future. Um, and then basically fine tune it as you go. So we've been building our systems for a long time, but that's really all it takes. It takes time to sit down and just think for a moment about what it is that you do. As you add people to your team, if you choose to do that, you can break parts of the job off that make sense and, and add it with other parts of, of the work that you're doing. So I think that's the easiest way to create a system, and I hope that's actually what it looks like. So I just wanted to add the question of referrals and building business. Um, to to your you know to, to go back to your story about the hotel, they did a fantastic job, and you want to go back there. And I think that that's the best the best referral is for a job well done. Um, and so what I, what I like to do when I'm done at home, I mean most of the time they do a pretty good job, but I ask almost 100 percent of my clients to write client testimonial for me. And that goes on to my profile page. And my profile page at this point is mostly client testimonials. But in this day and age where information is public, you know, I, I read Yelp reviews. Like, I actually love reading Yelp reviews. One of my favorite podcasts is about reviews, consumer reviews. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing that really represents, I think, in terms of giving consumers confidence in your services, are the reviews of other consumers. They don't know. Um, and people may find me randomly through kind of this website, whatever, but I would say that the majority of savvy buyers, renters, sellers are going to do a little bit of due diligence on who they're reaching out to, and um, that sort of 
you know, it, it is your, your homepage is your best advertisement. And I think you really do have to focus on making sure that that really shines. Speaking of systems, Robert, how do you <laughs> run out of here? Um, well, I have a chief of staff <laughs> that even said um, that a real estate coach told her, if you don't have an assistant, you are one. Uh, so that does a good thing. You were like, all about systems. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I just want to say thank you for being the biggest gathering of agents I've seen uh, in the last year. So thank you very much for coming today. <laughs> For the company is to bring back energy, connection, culture, community, and it's uh, damn near impossible to do that over a Zoom video conference. And so, thank you for being here. And uh, I'll be visiting over the next five weeks uh, over 50 different offices across the country, traveling every single day in the different city. Um, and, uh, and I'll continue to go to more offices in New York. I've done half offices in New York, I've done other offices. Uh, over the one day of week, I'll be here for the next five weeks. <laughs> and so, thank you, have fun. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Just going to touch on something both of you just said. Um, the touch on social media. So, one, Eugene's right. This is free. Social media is free. You said only 10 people. I was like, why didn't everyone just pull out the phone? It's it's like, like, and, 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 and I think I know why. Because I'm like, all right, when I start, like, well, this is a video about the brokers, but I'm not even going the brokers, but what was the switch for me was, <laughs> yes, <I'm not. laughs> the switch for me was, it doesn't matter what you post 99% of the time, 90% of the time, you just have to remind people that this is your job, that this is what you do, this is what you're passionate about, and you know, throw in some personal stuff too. So you posting this is not you saying, look at these great agents, it's, hey, oh, John was at this cool thing, right, John's helping my apartment. And then Tim talks to John, and now you have the two million dollars. It's that easy, man. But seriously, that's what it's all about. And I just one last easy, quick thing. When you were talking about social media is great, and you were just talking about starting out, start out by just creating videos. It's something that I hate that we haven't really focused on more of. Um, pick a topic. What's important for a buyer? What's important for a seller? You've probably seen a hundred of them, and you're thinking everyone's doing it, but your network's not seeing those stories and those things. Create the videos, and now you have a system because every time you need a buyer, you can send them each clip and you're reposting them. And I would say also really know your audience. I have a love hate relationship with social media and only recently became a public account again a couple of years ago on the insistence of my managers. So, <laughs> but, but he would never force me to do anything. But, um, you really do have to know your audience because I've gotten to a point where there's so many real estate agents on there that I feel like I'm just being sold to you all the time. It's the same way in my email box where I get like, I mean, literally hundreds of emails about listings and you become completely numb to it. You don't even look at it. And so to go back to the idea of like human connection, what is your audience going to want to see on your Instagram account? And also really try to humanize yourself I think it's really easy just to do some random listing shots and all of that, but whether it be focusing on the neighborhood. You know, I live in Brooklyn Heights, and I love the neighborhood, and I love to focus on things that are going on in Brooklyn. Um, you know, if it's your dog, like, lots of people love dog content. Like, I, my dog has a lot of followers on Instagram, you know, so it's just a way for you to stay engaged, but I think that because social media is so used now, you really have to curate and you really have to think about what you're posting and find a way to really engage with the people that you're trying to target because they're not going to want to see listings every single day of the week. And I think that you still want to stay in the back of their mind. Um, but it doesn't even necessarily have to be for real estate. I mean, my clients still reach out to me when they like, you know, need to get a whole repair or whatever. Like, I just, I'm always in the back of their mind because we stay connected and they didn't come follow me after we finished transacting because I don't just talk about real estate. Yeah, there's a staggering statistic that I read. Uh, fairly recent. Every single one, every single human, especially in New York, knows someone between eight and brokers. <laughs> so if you're not talking to your clients, it's somebody else's. If you're not, uh, if you're on social media, you're following somebody. You know, they're doing something, they're following someone. 
And it matters, like Bianca started doing his much videos, Bianca started doing video series, and all of a sudden she started popping up on my feed, and I'm like, every day she pops up on my feed. Say, say, no, it breaks the bell. Say, say, see, for all the same thing, like, she doesn't pop up on my feet. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, bro. <laughs> yeah, the same thing, say, see, for all. So I'm actually curious, I want to understand the rule. Can you raise your hand if you're a team leader or part of a team? Can you can you raise your hand if you've got at least one employee on the team? Okay, so you see right that, that's where that's where that's where the direction of business is going. Mostly mostly the business is going to the team because people are realizing I mean there's clearly the exception, but most people realize you just can't do it all by yourself. So I, I don't know if you guys go with uh, this is on which I think the biggest difference in my entire career is how people just work. I kind of take the same things in my own life. And for this one, I'll credit this third quarter value. Uh, but I think the guy that comes from the teacher coach, I know he teaches it, but he's such an angry, I don't know if he doesn't want But it's called an activity in this. This thing legit changed my life. So if you implement this into your space, I think you'll see a real difference. So you have to like this. You take the list, you cut it down the middle. On the spreadsheet, guys, this one's on the spreadsheet, with your spreadsheet, there's two columns, column A, column B. Column B, you write down every single thing you do in your day. An ideal scenario is you run this list for like 30 days. I'm talking everything. You grab your email, laundry, I order lunch, like he's really grand. Your outcome is to create every one of those things between one and four. And you're not prioritizing, you're qualifying. How qualified is someone to be to do this task? So one is incompetence, two is competence, three is excellent, and four is unique ability. Your goal, your all is our goal is to stay on shoot. I actually consider myself an entrepreneur at a point where what entrepreneurs do is they solve problems, and in order to solve problems, they have to maximize their time. So your goal, your goal is to be able to leverage out all the ones and twos and spend all your energy on the threes and fours. So I ask you, think about what your time is worth, like per hour, and is it really doing board packages or like answering emails? And so the fact is that if you want to get away from that too, and if you want to really focus on that which matters most, which is clients, property, server, community, whatever, you gotta remember that there's stuff, and it's usually the way of some kind of hire. Now, the world is very different today. I started, you can get a virtual system for six hours an hour. Uh, uh, they do board packages, they have screenshots, they do social media, they do everything now. So, so this thing made a really big difference in life. And your, your job essentially is to try to be insightful in direction. Your job is to hire yourself out of your last job. So once upon a time, I thought, like, 2,000 hours was amazing. Today, who wants to take out a $2,000 hour? How many? Right? So you don't have done success already. Just continue to hire yourself out of your job, right? So this thing needs to be this. If anybody's interested, just email and I can share the board information. Great. So we're going to hold one more question and open it up to the audience. So a few of you guys have hinted personal coach, I heard business coach, I heard Anthony Robbins. Like, what do you guys swear by? Is it a coach, a book, or both? Talk to us. I just swear by learning all kinds of different things. I'm always engaged with some kind of coaching program. I've tried a bunch of different things, and that's not because I'm jumping around. I was with Tom Perry for a long time. I coached with Saul 150 years ago. Like, I've done a bunch of Why things. Why coach that? At you? the end of the day, it's about accountability, and it's about shortcutting what you can do to go from here to there with a professional's help at the end of the day. That's what it's about. Um, the systems are out there, and if we can just figure a way to learn and put them into our business, we can just speed up much more quickly our progress. And that's really what it goes to us. For me, that's what it goes to us. Just to add on to this, because Colin and I both tried coaches and see a lot of value in it, and to embarrass you a little, Colin. Um, Colin's my business coach. Like, I, I feel so privileged, so lucky. I have somebody to bounce off everything, you know, back to what you said about personal. What we do, very few people can relate to. In any industry, it's exhausting, it's tiring to just share a war story with somebody, to call somebody and say, hey, I'm dealing, half the time I explain to Colin the problem I'm dealing with, I figure it out, it's just it's like therapy. You're talking it through and you're answering your own uh, problem. The, the reason I'm saying that is not to make you blush or embarrass yourself, but um, you know, hiring a coach is expensive. It helps, and they don't have to be a compass, they don't have to be New York. Um, that's just my advice to you guys. And, and accountability can be KPIs and your goals over the year, and we do that with our team as well, and I think that's very important. But talking to someone on a daily basis and, and coaches also, like, 
It's a lot about your remarks and where you, what you hit. Um, holding yourself accountable through them. And you know, having a partner or somebody to work with closely, whether that's having somebody to cold call with and having that accountability, it's incredibly important. Um, so I don't have anybody to call directly because I've heard a lot. But I think mean, it is so important. If you are working alone, do not work alone. I think that it's really important to have a relationship with your manager. It's really important to go into the office. I know that like it's sort of slow going, people going in, but any time I walk into a company's office, I make a connection with somebody. I feel so much better just to be able to talk about work because I think that things can get very insular if you're working think, working on things on your own. Um, I personally swear by my therapist. There's a lot of really affordable therapy now. Um, but really, really, really take care of yourself. I think that that's the most important thing. Like, I don't have employees to take care of. I'm my own employee, and I need to make sure that I'm taking care of so that I can do a good job. Um, but a lot of that is, is find strength in your support group. Find your support group, whatever it may be. Like, I'm obsessed with my Asian experience manager. She's just, like, the cutest and the best. Um, I love my managers, I love the admins in our office, I really do try to go to the office on a regular basis. Um, but find those connections that will make you a better business person, but then also in that you find those connections that make you a better person, because it's all the same thing. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just ask that accountability is a really big piece. Uh, if there's a million studies that show if you're accountable to someone, you're execution of all the time. But I think uh, emotional large part of psychology. Usually, uh, the, the gap from where we want to be, from where we are to where we want to be, is the emotional story of the entire sense. If you're getting out, if you're noticing, it's rarely uh, a lack of resources, and usually a lack of resourcefulness. So, a great coach will get your mindset, will get your psychology right, and that that which you felt is not possible yesterday, all of a sudden feels so much cheaper. So, do you have it? I have it. I'm on. <laughs> I, I want to come up for you. No coaches, no team drops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking to you. It's just weird. <laughs> I mean, um, one more thing to do, I just want to add in terms of finding people who make you better. If there are people who are obstacles, I mean, I'm only really making specific clients who have been obstacles in my life who really have made my life difficult. It's okay to cut them free. I think that at a certain point, you have to realize what your work and your own personal work and really focus on that. Thank you so much for our panelists. We're going to open it to 10 minutes.